Hello, fourth grade cougars. I thought it might be fun to make a volcano, a paper mache volcano. You know what? Making a paper mache volcano is one of the funnest, most hilarious things to do. And you also learn a little bit about science in the process. So if you're interested, while we're learning about the earth, we can make a paper mache volcano. So if you want to build a volcano with me, these are the things that you're gonna need. You're gonna need a bottle and you're gonna need some cardboard. It doesn't have to be fancy cardboard. It can be just any old cardboard that you have around. And you want to put a mark a little lower than the top of the bottle. If you do it to the top of the bottle, your volcano is going to be too tall. So I'm going to go about an inch away from the top of the bottle. I'm going to make a line like there. And now I'm going to cut my cardboard. Some other things that you're going to need, you're going to need to have some tape. And then after we build the frame of your volcano, we're going to do some paper mache. So I marked my cardboard and now I'm going to cut across on that line. Ugh. Sometimes it's really hard to cut cardboard because it's very stiff. It's a property of cardboard, right? And I'm going to cut out four pieces just like this. So now I have four pieces of cardboard and now I'm going to cut kind of like a, a cone shape. I'm going to cut up and I'm going to cut up again on the other side. So I'm going to have kind of like a flat topped triangle. And then we're going to tape them together. So I have my four sheets already cut out and now I'm going to tape them together. So I laid all four of the pieces down and I taped them together and I taped them on the other side too. So all of those pieces are taped together. Now, it doesn't look like a volcano right now, but in a minute, when we start putting, putting it together, you will see a volcano start to take shape. Okay, I'm going to take my flat pieces of paper, my flat cardboard, and now I'm going to put it together, and I'm going to add tape on the final side. Okay, so here's the shape of my volcano, and you can see my bottle fits in the center. My bottle is a little short, you might want to have your cardboard just a little bit shorter, but don't worry if it's a little tall, we can use some aluminum foil and we can make a little, uh, a little fun. And actually it's kind of interesting because usually there's a little bit of a dip at the top of a, of a volcano called the caldera. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a little paper mache on top of our volcano structure and we're gonna start making it look more like a volcano. Now that I have my, uh, the frame of my volcano made, I'm going to make my paper mache mixture. So what I wanna do is I'm gonna take a container and I'm going to have about half a cup of glue, just regular glue. And I'm gonna put it in the container and then I'm going to put less than half a cup of water. So I'm going to put about a quarter of a cup of water. And I'm going to mix it in. I'm going to get all the glue out of the cup. And I'm going to put it together in my container. And then I'm going to stir it. Mm, I'm going to put a little bit just a little bit more water and I want it to be really mixed in right I don't want it to be have water and glue separate I want it to be all mixed together so if you were in second grade remember when we talked about viscosity like sometime with the when we started out the glue was really viscous it was really thick and we added some more water and we thinned the glue and of course, this glue is pretty opaque. We can't get see anything through it. I like to always have my science uh, terms correct. 
All right, so I've got my glue, my gluey water here, or watery glue. And then I just got some paper from the recycling bin and I cut it into some strips. And now what I'm gonna do, I got a big piece of wax paper. Wax paper is great because things don't stick to it because of the waxy coating and it's waterproof. Some properties of the wax paper. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take a strip of my paper I'm gonna dip it into the glue. Here it is. I'm gonna move this over a little bit. I'm gonna dip it into the glue. I'm gonna get some of the glue off. I don't want it to be too, too wet. And now I'm going to put it on my volcano. Here we go. I'm gonna put it on my frame. And I'm gonna just keep adding these strips as I go along, I'm gonna go all the way around my volcano. And it's okay if it's bumpy, right? Volcanoes are not smooth. They're, one of the properties of the volcano is that it's nice and bumpy because there might be rocks and different things like that that have gone down the volcano, down the edges. And I'm just gonna keep adding these strips of paper and paper mache all the way down the volcano. All the way down to the very end, to the very bottom. And you're gonna see that, see now this is really wet. I don't really have to wet the next layer. I can just kind of put it on, maybe get my fingers a little wet with the glue and then just kind of paint it on my volcano. And now I'm gonna go all the way around the volcano. Here is my finished volcano, finished with the paper mache part. Now you see, after I did the first layer of the paper mache, I went back and I added a lot of bumps because volcanoes are not really smooth, are they? They're bumpy and rough. It's a property of a volcano. And I wanted my volcano to look kind of more real. So I added some kind of crinkly um, folded up pieces of paper mache. And now I'm gonna let it dry. It's gonna need to dry for at least one whole day, maybe even two days, and then we're going to paint it. Hi guys, so it is the next day. My, pa my paper mache has dried, and you can see my paper, my volcano is kind of bumpy, which I like because that's how a real volcano is. You don't have to make it like that if you don't want to. Now I'm going to paint my volcano. So I have some black paint, some red paint and some brown paint. You don't have to paint your volcano. You can leave it plain if you would like. I'm gonna start with some brown and black and I just put it on a paper plate. And I'm going to, um, I think I'm gonna start with the black and I'm gonna paint it on my volcano. So I'm gonna put like a mixture of black and brown because rocks are lots of different colors. Dirt is a lot of soil, like a, and it's like a darker black color and with it, when it has a nice organic matter in it, a lot, lot of humus. So I'm gonna now paint my volcano, a mixture of black and brown, and then I'll come back and add the lava with you. So I'm gonna just paint away here. Okay, I have finished with the black paint. As you can see, I covered the volcano, but I didn't cover every single inch of the volcano in black paint. I left some spots open, and now I'm going to cover it in brown paint. Not quite as much, but I'm just gonna like have the brown mix in because the volcano's not gonna be all black, it's not gonna be all brown. And I want it to kind of look a little messy, like nature. All right, here comes the brown. I want you to see how I'm doing the brown. I did not let my black paint dry 
because I wanted some mixing and smudging of the colors together. So I'm putting this brown paint right over the top and it kind of smudges together a little bit, which I like that look because that, to me, that seems like a more natural look. If you want to have yours not smudged together, then what you need to do is you need to let the black paint dry uh, before you add the brown paint. But as I said, I like the smudgy look. And also, um, as I also said, you don't have to paint it if you don't want to. I'm doing it because I think it's kind of fun to paint and I have the time to do it. So I finished painting the brown and the black. And you can see I did not cover every single part of the volcano. I still have some parts at the bottom that are unpainted. And there's some parts on the where the paper kind of folded that I didn't paint. I'm fine with that. I'm kind of liking the way that this looks, which is kind of like a, a mixture of the black and the brown. Now, I am going to let this dry for about an hour right now because if I add the red paint on top of the brown and everything, I think it's going to get too mixy. And I want to have, I want to be able to see the red lava right. dripping. It's a, it's a volcano, which is very, very hot. I'm going to continue letting it drip down and then I'm going to let it dry. All right, I am now ready to have my volcano explode. I'm going to test to make sure that my volcano is the right height for my bottle. So I'm going to put my bottle inside. Whoops, actually I have a, I thought mine was a little too short. So I put a bowl underneath it. And there you go. I want my, my top, the bottle top to come out a little bit. And I'm going to use some aluminum foil up at the top to make sure that all of the lava, all of the, the stuff that I'm going to create goes down my volcano. And it kind of looks like uh, snow on the top of the mountain, right? So here's my volcano. I've got the bottle. It's sticking up. And I put it on the little bowl so it would stick up higher. And I put some aluminum foil. Now, these are the ingredients you need to make the lava. You need some baking soda. You need some vinegar. I like mine to be red, so I have some red food coloring. And I have some hand soap, because if I add hand soap to it, then the bubbles will be thicker and gooier, more viscous, more interesting. So now, I'm gonna take a spoon and I'm going to put some baking soda down into the funnel. I'm going to put another scoop of baking soda. Not a big spoon, but just a, I don't know. I, I don't know. I feel like you, one big spoon of baking soda is good. And now I've already mixed my vinegar and soap and uh, red food coloring. And now I'm going to pour it into the bottle. Oh, there we go! Look at that volcano erupting! Oh, it's fantastic! Look at it dripping down the side of the volcano. Now, remember, if you're in second grade, we've been talking about volcanic rocks. So these rocks, do you see how there's all these bubbles in the, in the uh, erupting lava? Imagine that those, that then dries and it's a hard rock with lots of holes where the bubbles used to be. So that would be scoria, scoria, right? And I'm gonna give it a little shake and I should have a little bit more reaction. Wow! And if this had gone and exploded a lot, there would be ash in the air. And as that ash settled down and made layers and layers, that would be called the tuff. Now the basalt would be the lava that's still inside the volcano that hasn't come out and it cools slowly. I'm gonna add some more vinegar to my reaction.
Here it goes. Come on. I'm going to shake it up a little bit. Make sure it reacts. Oh, yes. Look at that fantastic volcano. So boys and girls, you can do this with your volcano. When it starts to slow down, give it a little shake. Get the reaction to connect a little bit more. And you can also pour in some more vinegar and soap and it'll react more and more and more. I'm gonna keep adding some more. Wow, here it comes again. Go volcano, go. Have a great Thanksgiving, guys.